In PTC MathCAD, there are a variety of different kinds of equal signs. Let's go through six of them to figure out what they mean. And as I'm doing this, I'm going to put in documentation. Let me start off with a text block, which spans across the entire length of the sheet. The first one we'll take a look at is the evaluation operator, which is a simple, simple equal sign. So for example, let's say that I do some math in here. Let's take 24. And then I'm going to use shift six to get the uh, power. And then let's say the fourth power. I want to evaluate this. Then I'll hit the equal sign. Here we get the math. I want this in, in the actual number format. Let's go to math formatting and change this from general to decimal. So there we see that 24 to the fourth power is equal to 331,776. You can also use it for evaluating some of your built-in variables. So for example, let's evaluate C. And that, there we have the speed of light. And we can also evaluate some of our other different constants using math. Let's multiply 2 times. And then for pi, I'm going to type in the letter P and then control G. So 2 times pi is equal to 6.283. Also from the math formatting, if you want to get that out to more decimal places, you can choose how many that you want. So there's the first kind of equal sign, which is the evaluation operator. For the next one, let's take a look at the definition operator. Again, I'm going to put in another text block in here. Definition operator. And this is where you actually, as the name says, you are going to define something. So for example, maybe I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to create one for the gravitational constant. G is going to be equal to 6.67430 times 10. And then I'll do shift 6 again to the negative 11 power. And all of this is going to be multiplied by meters cubed. Again, shift six to get to the exponent. I'm using the space bar to highlight the entire unit so I can divide this using the forward slash. And that's going to be divided by kilograms times second shift six squared. And to document this, Let's put out over here and then left click and I'm going to put in a text box and this is going to be my gravitational constant. So I've defined something and in this particular case I defined something using units. Let's take a look. Actually, before, I'm going to put in a little edit here. I'm going to create a few more different variables in here so I can show you how to define a variable and also a function. Okay, so I've created three other variables, one for the mass of the Earth, radius of the Earth, and mass of the Moon. I'm going to show you creating one for the radius of the Moon because there are a couple things I forgot to explain. Let's say I want to have a subscript. You can use the subscript operator here. As you see, the keyboard shortcut is control and the minus sign. I'll use the keyboard shortcut, and then let's type in Moon. Then to use the definition operator, you can go to the operators drop down, and we have definition right here. And the keyboard shortcut is the colon. So I'm just going to type the colon. Oh, let me get out of there. Let's type the colon. And then I can say that this is going to be equal to 1079.4, and then multiply by miles. And also, one thing I want to point out here is I'm mixing up the units. I have the radius in meters over here. I have this other radius in miles. Once again, let's put in a text box so that we are documenting what we are doing. So now I have these different variables. We can also use the definition operator in order to perform a new definition of a variable using math. So for example, let's say I want to calculate the escape velocity of the Earth. I will call it V and then control minus. And I'll just put ESC for escape. This is going to be equal to, and it's going to be the square root. I can use the square root operator. And that is going to be 2 times G, which I previously defined, 
times the mass that we want, which is going to be mass control minus earth. And then I want all of this divided by, and I was using the space bar to highlight everything, that's going to be divided by the radius, in this case here, radius control minus earth. And then we could evaluate this inline. I don't need to start a new math expression to evaluate this. If I hit the equal sign, here we get it out over here. And it's giving us the escape velocity in meters per second. Hey, I can type in here, I can change the distance unit to kilometers. When I click outside, it evaluates it. So we have the escape velocity is equal to 11.186 kilometers per second. I can also define this as a function. So let's type in velocity, and I'll do control minus, and let's type out escape. I just want to make it distinctly different from the previous one. And this is going to be a function of m and r. And it, these two variables don't have to exist beforehand. We're just saying that these are the values that are going to be passed to this particular function. And then once again, I will use the colon for the definition operator. And let's go to square root. I always forget which is the keyboard for square root. I think it's the backslash. And this is going to be 2 times g times m. Once again, I'll use the space bar to highlight everything. Let's use the forward slash for division and then type in r. And that way now I've got a function to find over here and I can evaluate it velocity, control minus, escape. And then I'm going to use the parentheses, and the values I'm going to pass this time are going to be mass, control minus, moon. Yes, I use really long variable names. And then comma, radius, control minus, moon. I also like to use a lot of subscripts. And then to evaluate this, I just use the equal sign. Once again, I can change this to kilometers per second, something I understand, have a better feel for. So there we have 2.376 kilometers per second. I can actually take this and I can copy it using control C and then position over here, control V. And if I want to evaluate it in a different set of units, hey, maybe I want to evaluate it in miles per second. So there we have the value there. All right, let's go on down to the next one that we're going to take a look at. And this is going to be the global definition operator. And the way that MathCAD works is that it evaluates your math just the way that we read. In other words, from left to right, top to bottom. So let's see, for a global definition, this is unique because these are evaluated at the beginning of the calculation cycle. So you can use them in order to, you know, let's say we change something down here and we want it to affect everything else. So for example, there is a special variable called origin, which, oh, I actually hit the uh, wrong operator. Let's go to the operators over here. The global definition operator is control, shift, and minus. And this will make this in effect throughout the entire worksheet regardless of its position. So I can say that, hey, the origin that I want for my vectors and matrices, I want that to be one instead of zero. I can use that to set the index number for the first column and the first cell. You can also use global definition operators. What I like to use them for is setting up new sets of units. So for example, I'm going to type in LY, and this is going to be for a light year. Then let's go to the global definition operator. And the global definition operator, you can see it looks like three bars in here. This is going to be equal to C, the speed of light, times YR. And then I can evaluate it in line, and we can see that it's 9.461 times 10 to the 15 meters. If I go over here and click over by the variable name, then I can go to the labels and change this from a variable to a unit. And so now I can use this for expressing any different kinds of units or distances. So for example, here we have the radius of the Earth. Hey, let's evaluate that. 
let's type in radius, control minus, and then earth, and hit the equal sign. And right now it is being evaluated in meters. Hey, let's hit the backspace so that I can get rid of the unit that's in there and then change to light years. And we can see that 6.744 times 10 to the minus 10 light years. That's the radius of the earth. So there's the global definition operator for using stuff anywhere in here. And the next one that we'll take a look at, actually we'll do two of them in one. We're going to take a look at the local assignment and the comparison operators. Once again, let me document in here. We're going to take a look at local assignment and comparison. So local assignments are used inside of programs. So I'm going to write a program to calculate a Fibonacci number. So I'm going to type in the function and I'm going to name it Fibonacci. And it's going to take a variable n. And this is going to be colon equals the definition operator. Then let's go to programming over here. And this one allows us to start a new program. And the initial value, I'm going to have it return a value called result. So let's have result. The initial value of this, I'm going to set to a value of zero. And this is going to be the local assignment operator. And the local assignment looks like an arrow that points to the left. So the result's going to be equal to zero. Now I'm going to hit the enter key because we're going to perform an if then else. So we're just going to do if and the first one will be if n is actually equal to 1. So I'm going to go to the operators over here. Here we have the comparison equal. So this is control plus the equal sign. So we're going to compare if that value n is equal to 1. Then over here, I want the result to be 1. So let's go to programming. And this is the local assignment. And it's going to be equal to 1. Then let's use the right arrow because I want to make sure that I'm positioning my cursor in the right place. I'm going to then write another if then statement. Let's go to if. If n is greater than 1, and this time I'm just typing it in the keyboard, then what I'm going to do is say that result is going to be equal to. And here's the neat thing. I can do a recursive function. I can call the same function within the function. It's going to be the Fibonacci of n minus 1. And then let me use the right arrow to position outside of the parentheses. Then I'm going to use the plus sign and Fibonacci of n minus 2. And so that is good. Then let's position outside over here, hit the enter key. The last line inside of my program is going to specify what's going to be returned. I'm going to return this result variable that I created. And so now that we have this program written using the local assignment operator and the comparison operator, let's evaluate this for some Fibonacci numbers. And so we can see here what's going to be returned if I type in Fibonacci 0, Fibonacci 1. Let's say Fibonacci 2. That's going to be equal to 1. And try a few more. Fibonacci 5. That's going to be equal to 5. And the bigger the number, the longer it's actually going to take to calculate because it's calling the functions themselves so many times. And let's do one more over here. Let's do Fibonacci 30, 30th Fibonacci number. You could actually see there it was spinning as it was calculating. Once again, I'm going to go to the math formatting tab and change this from general to decimal. So we can see that the 30th Fibonacci number is 832,040. Now I'm going to pull up a website to see if these values are actually true. So here we have a web page that lists the various different Fibonacci numbers, the first 300 Fibonacci numbers. And if I take a look at Fibonacci 12, yep, that's equal to 144. If we take a look at Fibonacci 30, there we have our 832,040 value. 
Uh, and again, just a very interesting thing, a neat thing that you can do with writing programs is that they can be recursive and call themselves. All right, the last equal sign that we're going to take a look at in this video is going to be for symbolic evaluation. Once again, let's go to the math tab. Let's put in a text block and symbolic evaluation. And just like it sounds, we are using this to evaluate some kind of expression symbolically as opposed to numerically. First, let's take a look at a derivative. I'll go to the operators overflow here. Here we have the derivative operator, and I'm going to do the derivative re with respect to x, and then I'm going to use my right arrow to move to my uh, actual expression. And let's evaluate the tangent of x. So the derivative, oops. So you'll see here that I am getting an error because I used the wrong equal sign. Let's position, we have it over there to the left. Let's delete the equal sign over there. If you want to do a symbolic evaluation, you'll go to, to the drop down over here. And under definition and evaluation, we will choose symbolic evaluation. And so there we can see it's the tan squared of x plus 1. Let's take a look at a, another symbolic evaluation. This time we will look at doing an integral. So let me go to my operators. Let's see here we have the integral. And let's do the integral. And this is an indefinite integral. You'll notice that I'm not going to specify the start or the ending point. Now I'm just using my right arrow to move to the field that I want to fill in. Let's evaluate the natural log of x dx. And I'm just using, my again, my right arrow to get to the field that I want natural log of x dx. Again, I'm not just going to hit the equal sign like I did incorrectly before a moment ago. Let's go to the symbolic evaluation. And so there we can see the natural log of x. Uh, the integral of it is x times the quantity natural log of x minus 1. One last thing I want to show you that relates back to the definition operator we can actually do a retroactive definition. So for example, I'm just moving this out over here, and then I'm going to position my mouse at the front of the evaluation, and then I'm going to hit the colon sign. So that allows me to assign this to a particular variable, and I want this to be equal to tau, so I'll type in letter T, control G, and that way I could use tau throughout my worksheet wherever I want. Let's just line things up. So there you have it, six different kinds of equal signs available to you in MathCAD. There's the evaluation operator, which is a simple equal sign. Then there is the definition operator, which you can use a keyboard shortcut of the colon, and you can use it for defining variables and functions. Then we have our global definition operator. And so these are evaluated at the beginning of the calculation cycle. Here we have our local assignments, which is the left pointing arrow, which is used inside of a program. We also have a comparison operator, which is uh, used in if then else statements. And finally, we have the symbolic evaluation which looks like an arrow pointing to the right. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creolwindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.